there they go. Welcome back to RacingNews.com. I'm Magic, and we're taking a closer look at the Gazelle Stakes, a grade three race at Aqueduct on Saturday, April 9th. And race 10 on the card has a field of eight thrilled fillies going a mile and eighth on the dirt. And with me to preview this major Kentucky Oaks prep race is Dr. Miranda. Dr. Miranda, if the viewers have already watched the Ashland preview, they might know who you have to pick in this. But let's pretend that we had, didn't give it out in that preview over at RacingDudes.com and YouTube.com slash RacingDudes. Take us through the field for the Gazelle and let us know who you like to win. All right. So the number one is Morning Matcha. I really like this horse if she was going to be running in the Busher Invitational, but she got scratched for the main line, which she won. So they made a great decision. She likes to be in the back of the pack in these races and close, which she did last race. She won by over six lengths. Now, that wasn't the toughest field at Parks, and it was only four horses. So she faced Magic Circle, who I really liked last weekend did terrible in the fantasy stakes getting eighth place so maybe this horse isn't as good as i originally thought the second horse is gratitude who has only raced three times in her lifetime her last start was the ford gal where she finished fifth place a ways behind the winner girl with a dream she really had no impact on that race and the notes say that she was tired so the fact this race is longer doesn't make me love her at all. Now, that was two months ago. Maybe she has had a chance to mature and take a little break. But I just don't really see a whole lot that I like here. She did win a maiden special weight. But I'm just going to go look elsewhere. I think Todd is putting her in here in hopes he can get another Oaks contender. But I just don't see it happening with this horse. The number three is nostalgic for William Mott. She broke her maiden first time out, won very impressively. She was then put in stakes company in the Desmoselle, and she didn't do a whole lot. Ness won that race. She is on the top of the list for me for Oaks if she wins Friday. Um, they then tried to put her on turf, and she did terribly and got last place. They dropped her back into an optional claimer company and won by six lengths. But I honestly don't think she's good enough for this field. The number four is Shotgun Hottie who um, recently got second in the Butcher Invitational behind Vinti Valentine, who won by over seven links. It was a big jump up from her 64 previous buyer to an 81. So I really think that she likes these longer distances. And the fact that this is a mile and eighth, I think she's going to like it even more. She likes to stay mid-pack. So as long as she can stay within reach of Vinti Valentine, I think she has a good chance at hitting the board again. This race is going to be a big test for her, however, because this is her first grade stakes, but she has hit the board in every one of her stakes races, so I don't think there's going to be a big issue with that. Uh, the fifth horse is Binti Valentine, who won the Busher Invitational and finished behind Nest by a neck in the Desmoselle. She popped a 92 buyer last race, and that's a lot better than what she's previously done. She had been off for three months before that, and I think it really did her some good. She matured a bit, and there was no issue in the Busher with winning by over seven lengths. She is going for her fourth career win out of five starts, and I don't think she's going to have any trouble with this race either. She's been in New York training this spring, which is her home track, and I think she's just ready for this race. So she should have no issue. I think she's going to go straight for the lead and try to keep it. The number six is Classy Edition, who finished second in the Ford Gal behind Kathleen O. We saw how good of a performance that was last week in Gulfstream Park Oaks. She was handwritten out and beat Goddess of Fire, which is about the same amount of links that Classy Edition lost to her. Both times, I don't think Kathleen O is giving her 100% at the end, though. So this horse was very good against ungraded stakes last fall in New York. So maybe second time off the layoff is what she needs. She ran 81 by her last race, so I think that she can do better than that. The number seven is Divine Huntress, whose last race was the Rachel Alexandra, where she got ninth place. She wasn't involved the entire race. I just think that she was in over her head with some of these horses. She is from Parks and Laurel, and I just think the competition was too much for her. She does have a little bit of speed, but I just don't think she's going to impact this race. The last horse is Carrigate who had taken five times to break her maiden in 2021. She finally got it in Aqueduct going a mile. They gave her a break, and she came back in 2022 in ungraded stakes and hit the board. But there just wasn't very much competition in that race. She's never raced over a mid-60 buyer, so there's just not much that I think that she's going to do here. So with all of that said, my top pick is number five, Vinti Valentine. I just really think that she's came into her own, and she's going to be very tough. She reminds me a lot of search results from last year. And if Nest wins the Ashland and she wins the Gazelle, it could be a one, two for Oaks this year, like it was for Malathat and search results last year. Underneath an exacta box, I'm going to add in shotgun hottie and classy edition. So a four, five, six exacta box. 
the trifecta box, I'll add in morning matcha. So a one, four, five, six trifecta box. Well, thanks for sure. It's going to be an exciting race at Aqueduct Race 10. That's the grade three gazelle stake. She's Dr. Miranda. Head over to racingdudes.com. We've got you covered with free picks for every race, every track across the country. Head over to racingdudes.com. Or sorry, head over to youtube.com slash racing dudes. We have full coverage of the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks Trails, including Dr. Miranda's preview of the Ashland Stakes Friday opening day at Keeneland. So make sure you go check that out as well. Hit like if you like the video. Subscribe if you really like it. Tell us below in the comments who you think is winning the gazelle stakes. We'll see you with the track. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.